made the Olympics in Beijing, and he's got one touch right now. Now the referee is not awarding that touch, even though Abajo hit, the referee is saying that touch came after I called halt. And the reason is right there, where their bell guards come together and kind of lock. The referee said, look, that's when I called halt. It's for safety, it's for a lot of reasons, but I called halt so your touch is invalid. That's a really nice action from Avdiv. I mean, if you had given me 10 to 1 odds and said, look, you know, Avdiv will be ahead 10 uh, 1 on Abajo, I wouldn't have taken it. Not even for a dollar. Okay, maybe a dollar. But I'll tell you, this is just unexpected. Finally. Finally, Abajo turns on the light again. Now, you'll watch Adif, he doesn't, he's almost not even gonna care. He's just gonna jump in, try to get two lights to come on. And this is where it gets so hard in Epe. Can you hit your opponent without being hit? Yes, the machine has a lockout. Yes, you have to hit almost simultaneously. But the bottom line is, it's really hard to hit somebody with one light, and Abajo pulls it off there, and really it didn't even look like he had his weapon in his hand when he did it. Mm. Abajo comes right out, tries to surprise him, and it works. Abdi was used to like a more methodical preparation, and Abdi ran at him, paused for a split second, then finished with a strong action. Is it too little too late? I tend to think it is, but I've seen stranger things happen. Abajo decides, look, I, I got my five touches. I'm going to back off now. I'm going to try to regroup because it's not over until it's over. But let me tell you, I need to get my stuff together back here and see what's going on because obviously what I came into this about as for a game plan is not working. And these guys are not strangers. I mean, they have competed against each other. They've seen each other at tournaments. He's talking with his coach, uh, Angel Fernandez, I don't know what Angel's saying. He's probably saying, wow, let's hope your friends in Madrid are not watching this right now unless you can score some more touches. Uh, the coach for the Russian, he's saying a lot. For a guy who's up seven touches, he's saying a lot. Be surprised if he's saying much more than, let's put this away, don't waste a lot of energy because we're going to have another bout defense. But stay active. Whatever you do, don't cruise. You can see the height difference there. So Abajo comes in with a natural height difference. And two or three of Adiv's touches, I don't want to call them lucky because there's no real luck. Luck is when preparation meets opportunity, and he was definitely prepared. But really, when a man that's a head taller than you misses on a straight attack, eh, it's a little lucky. And that's what Abdi's got to do. That's really all he has to do is what we what we call in fencing, double out. That means you just keep getting double lights until the end of the bout. There he decides to make para post. And hey, why not? I can take a chance. I'm ahead seven, now eight touches. I can do a lot of things because I have some touches to play with. I'm playing with house money. Wow. While I did not expect Abajo to come back, 
I just, I'm surprised at that action there. Uh, not the type of action. I'm just surprised that he again misses. He almost looks tentative. His arm is tight, his shoulder's tight, and he misses the leg of the Russian, who takes advantage and hits him in the shoulder. That, ladies and gentlemen, is probably the fastest epi bout you're ever gonna see between two evenly matched competitors.